In Africa, many people believe superstition and witchcraft. Not only that, in Africa as well, we have the large number of people with albinism than the rest of the world. If you are born in Africa or in Tanzania with albinism, you are thought to be evil. Traditional healers and witchcraft, they are spreading information that the body parts of people with albinism can make someone to be rich. So, we have, I have lost so many brothers and sisters along to this side. Allow me to explain to, explain to you my story. As a young child, when I recognized that I was different than anyone else in my village, I ran towards to the group of children who were black. And then suddenly they ran to me. I asked myself, I tried to ask myself, who am I? Which problem do I have? Why are they running? And then that day, I thought much. The following day, I went to the street. Then here again, the same subject, I found children were making noises, they were mocking at me, they were laughing at me. This time, I decided to ask help from the elders that if they can tell these children to stop mocking at me, laughing at me, because they were calling me ghost, they were calling me white ghost, all names which are not related to the human beings. Wonderful. These people who were adults whom I expected there could be a help, they ran away, they didn't want to be closer with me, by thinking that if I touch them, if I will be close with them, there could be contaminated albinism. Many people, or many children with albinism in Africa are being killed in a delivery process. I ran away to my mother. I asked her. I was crying all, all, of, all of my way. I asked her, why am I different? Why others are they laughing at me? Why others also are they throwing stones to me? Why, the other, why others do not want to hear about me? Why if I go to the sun I get burned? I told my mom that I hate myself. I hate every cell of my body. I hate others because they hate at me. Then my mother, she told me, calm down. I have a nice statement to you. Then of course I was angry because I had so many questions. And she told me, you know, the way how you are is a creation of God. To me it was something which was not sensing anything. Then she told me, your father and I, we were advised to end your life, to poison you, because you are, you know, I'm a curse in the community. You are the curse. We were told to kill you, but brave, my mom or my mother, she refused to act accordingly. And then, 
When my mother was telling me this story, it something created in my in my heart. I said, "Why, why, 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 why do you want? Why, why, why are the children still hurting me instead of loving?" So my mother told me, "You have to accept yourself first, then others they will fall." Then I said, "What what words of this?" Others are hating me as well. I have to hate them. But she was giving me advice. To me, it was somehow a wrong way. But it was, you know, that's why I'm in front of you today. I survived because of the protection from my mother, my defender, my foundation. I can imagine how many children are being killed because she was advised by midwife. Then I continued growing up. One day, my mother, I asked her, "Why, if today I I threw a stone to someone, and someone again threw to me, what would have happened?" She told me, "You have to love your enemy, because if you love, you will give him or her." A chance to discuss, to know your ability, to know exactly who you are. Then, when I was growing up, the time to, do, to go to the school comes. My mother takes me to the school. When I was there, I was rejected by the headmaster. That we don't receive, we don't teach children like you. But my mother, because she was. My advocate, she said, she must,、uh, my son must study here because this school is belongs to the community, and she, he is come from the community as well. When I went to the classroom, the children were wondering, "How color do I have?" And then I was given my desk to sit in the middle, far away from the blackboard. Where we people with albinism, we have a low vision problem. I didn't know what can I do. A week without writing, without copying any notes, and then the teacher said, "Could you come tomorrow with your mother?" Then I said, "Why not? I will." I went to tell my mother, and then I went there. Then the teacher asked me, "What's problem to your son?" My mother, because she knows me from the beginning, she explained my son has two main problem. He has a low vision problem, so he must sit in the front of the class. Two, he cannot go to you know to stay in a long time to the sun. And then from that day, the teachers started to you know they send me. In front, where I was able to do my stuffs, and at this time I get courage. Of course, I was the monitor in the classroom. I was the head prefect in the school. So this continued to give me courage. All my way to secondary, to university. When I completed my my, my university. I was employed in 2007. Then I started to hear this violence of human rights, of people with albinism to be attacked, to be killed. Then I went to my boss. I'm sorry. Would you give me a chance to quit the job? Then I could go to the pub. I mean, to the community, to tell them who we are. That we are human being. There is nothing in our body parts 